Hello. In this lesson, we explore the mysterious cloud, what it really is, how it came to be, and some of the security issues that we encounter there. First, let's demystify the cloud. It's amusing that the cloud has extremely high public name recognition, but few understand what it really is. Even the name cloud makes it sound unclear. But traditionally, before the cloud, companies and other organizations purchased their own computer systems to run the application software needed to run the company. These computer systems were located in the company's facilities and were managed by teams of employees. While not always the case, often there was more than one computer system, or server, per major application. This setup was expensive because of the capital cost of the computer hardware and the labor cost of the resident wizards and high priests who kept it all running. But it was worth it. These systems raised overall productivity and helped maintain competitive advantage. Not long ago, someone noticed that of all their computer systems, only a few were relatively busy at any given moment in time. Most were idle, waiting for the next transaction to come in. The bottom line was that there was a lot of wasted resources. So, a new way of using server hardware was developed, virtualization. Actually, it's an old technology from mainframe computing, but that's not important right now. Virtualization lets a single server run the operating systems and applications from multiple servers simultaneously. This way, the workloads are consolidated onto fewer servers, increasing their utilization and saving money. It wasn't long until most data centers were transformed from rows of computer hardware dedicated to specific applications into a collection or pool of general hardware resources running virtualized applications. It was just the smart thing to do. Now along come some clever entrepreneurs who build enormous data centers filled with generalized computer hardware and offer to rent out portions of this infrastructure so that their customers can run their virtualized applications there instead of on their own hardware. And with that, the cloud is born. This type of cloud computing is called Infrastructure as a Service, or IaaS. There are other types of clouds out there as well. For example, some cloud providers offer up not the infrastructure to run applications, but the complete application environment themselves. This is known as Software as a Service, or SaaS. Either way, moving the cost of having applications run on expensive, company-owned hardware capital assets to a model where the cost is a recurring operating cost is very attractive to most organizations. It's the best thing to happen to accountants since the invention of the spreadsheet. Now, let's look at what this means to security. When applications are hosted in a company's own data center, the security picture is straightforward. You put the appropriate security technology at the right locations to address the specific security concerns. Providing security for the cloud, however, is not so clear. You could say it's a bit cloudy. The cloud infrastructure provided by infrastructure as a service vendors is protected in various ways. From an availability point of view, the infrastructure is designed by the vendor to be highly available, and it follows that the infrastructure's uptime is the responsibility of the vendor. From a security point of view, the vendor is only responsible for securing the infrastructure it provides. As a customer, when you install one or more virtualized applications in the vendor's cloud infrastructure, you become responsible for securing the access, the network traffic, and the data for the applications. Now, most vendors supply some form of security tools so that various parts of the customer's cloud application environment can be secured. But these tools can pose a few problems. First, these tools tend to provide only a few basic security functions, and they are the same tools that the vendor uses to secure the underlying infrastructure. If an attacker were to bypass these tools at the infrastructure layer, they would likely be able to bypass them at the customer's application level as well. Second, and perhaps more important, is the fact that many organizations operate in a hybrid world where some of their applications remain hosted in their own data centers, some in vendor A's infrastructure as a service cloud, some in vendor B's cloud, and various others with multiple software as a service vendors. This is what we call a multi-cloud environment, and it comes with a multi-cloud problem. Multiple, independent, uncoordinated security solutions. A problem where the complexity can scale geometrically 
with the number of cloud vendors involved. Now, highly trained security staff are scarce to start with. Add to that a burden to integrate and operate multiple non-integrated security environments simultaneously. It can be a real problem. Now at Fortinet, we have security solutions such as FortiGate, FortiMail, FortiWeb, FortiSandbox, and others that are not only at home in a company's data center, but provide the same security in the same consistent way and optimized for all the leading infrastructure as a service cloud providers, such as Amazon's AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, VMware, Cisco ACI, Oracle Cloud, and IBM. So to wrap up, we've shown the fundamentals of how the cloud came to be, how cloud environments are secured, and described Fortinet's cloud security strategy, which scales from simple cloud-only environments to complex multi-cloud environments. And hopefully, we've demystified the cloud for you. Thank you for your time, and please remember to take the quiz that follows this lesson.